Right. Florian will prepare the presentation of uh, Annette Larner from uh, the Aarhus City Archives uh, from Denmark. And uh, you're also a member of the Recurb, as I know, and we will be talking about saving the Danish cultural heritage and engaging new users across all over Denmark. Stage is yours. Thank you very much. Such an honor to, uh, to be here today, so uh, thank you for having us. Um, so, my name is Annette Lana. I'm uh, from uh, Denmark, from Aarhus, which is the second largest city in Denmark. Um, I work at the City Archives, where we are currently hosting and owning a um, national project uh, using transcribers. And I will be talking about that today, and I'll be talking about how we are engaging new users across all of Denmark in this citizen science project. The outline for today is, uh, first I'll give you an introduction to the retro digitization project, henceforth retro. Um, it, it is um, the Danish approach to AI-powered text recognition and transcription. We don't really have any other uh, projects, large-scale pro projects in, in Denmark currently using transcri uh, transcribers. Uh, so we are, as you might say, a front-runner in this. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about the sources that we're using, some of our results. Um, but more importantly, I'll be talking about who our partners are and who our participants are. Um, who are they and, and how are we engaging them and how are we training them? Um, so that is uh, the outline for today. And also I'll be talking a little bit about what's next after this particular project. So a couple of weeks ago, Flo contacted me on LinkedIn and he said, um, I just noticed a big spike in users in Denmark. Why might that be? And I said, well, that's because uh, two weeks ago we hosted uh, about 100 students from the University of Aarhus history students, second year students at the archive. And um, we wanted to introduce them to transcribers. We wanted to introduce them to using and reading old handwriting. And it was really quite an interesting uh, day. They came at nine o'clock and they left at, um, at three. And at first, we, uh, we gave them an introduction to the program, and then we gave them some training uh, pages and, and set them off and let them loose on the, on the program. And it was, it was quite fun, actually, because some of the students, they, they, they thought the, 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 the challenge was really interesting. And their initial reaction was, when they saw this text from 1940s, this is like my great-grandmother's handwriting, and I can't read it. And these were history students. And you might say, well, history students, they will be working with handwritten documents from the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, maybe even further back than that. And it's a really good idea that they, might, that they are actually able to, to read the original sources. So when they encountered 19... 40s documents and they weren't able to read it, they were like, oh my goodness, how are we going to proceed as history students? I will talk a little bit more about that later. So the retro digitization project uh, actually launched in 2017, not 18, um, as a collaboration between the Organization of Danish Archives and the City Archive in Aarhus. It was a, an effort to um, try and digitize council records and parish records from the early eight, 1800s up until the early 1900s. Um, it was um, an effort to, um, it was in an effort to commemorate um, the 50th anniversary uh, of the um, council reforms in Denmark in 1970, uh, where 1,080, no, 1,098 councils and parish councils were joined together into 277 councils. It's now further been reduced to 98 councils. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to digitize, scan and transcribe um, court, no, not court, uh, council records and minutes um, from, uh, from, from this period in the mid 1800s up until the early 1900s. And we wanted to make these records available, widely available to everybody, regardless of whether or not they're able to read handwriting. 
So our aim is to digitize between 1.5 million and 2.5 million documents. So that is a huge task and we can't do it all by ourselves. So what did we do? First of all, the material that we've chosen was town council and parish council records and minutes. The reason why we um, did that was because these sources will help us understand how local dem democratization developed, basically decentralized democracy happening in all these different councils all over Denmark. The, um, the material is also a massive catalog of geographical place names, names of people, um, local decision making, records of uh, local interests, where did people, uh, where, why did we put roads in a certain place, what happened to um, poor relief, that sort of thing. And it's also a, a unique collection of sources regarding our decentralized democracy in Denmark. So the organization of this particular project is with, owned by the Organization of Danish Archives, which is ODA, and our archive in Aarhus. We have a project manager, and then we have three coordinators and IT experts. And then we have an advisory board from the Danish National Archives, Aarhus University, the Royal Library in Denmark. Uh, and they have been, they've been invited into this project as sort of to, to uh, validate that the work that we're doing has scientific validity. We initially received funding from uh, the Organization of Danish Archives and Aarhus City Archive when we first started out in 2017. But then last year, we received funding from various Danish foundations to make a three-year project a bit more of a um, collected project. So the money will be mostly used for buying uh, credits from transcripts. When you... When we, when we invite people or archives all over Denmark, we, uh, well, we want as many archives, local archives, from, from Denmark as possible. The way that the Danish archive system is set up is that we have the national archives, and then we have paragraph seven archives, which is local and city archives. And we are mostly working with local and city and, and town archives. And we've invited as many as we could possibly find, and some of them thought it was a great idea, and they came back and said, we might actually like to hear more about this. So we said, well, everyone who wants to participate uh, are very welcome to. Um, they will receive support from our IT experts uh, and our coordinators, and we um, put on workshops for the various archives, but also for some of the volunteers. There are some terms and conditions for participating is that they, these archives, they must scan all of the records themselves and they must add them to the project website themselves. We can't do all of it for them because we are looking at thousands and thousands of records and thousands and thousands and thousands of, of pages and we, we just can't lift that task all by ourselves. So we are expecting and hoping that their participation is such that they will uh, scan their records themselves. If they can't, if they are too small, small, tiny little local archives, then we can help them with the scanning. They must all sign up to use transcribers. That is a re prerequisite, because that is what we got the money for. Um, some archives already have volunteers. This project is heavily based on volunteers. Uh, we can't do all this transcribing ourselves, so we really do rely on um, excellent volunteers. Some archives have lots of volunteers, some archives don't have any, and some archives have few, and it's up to the various archives, the local archives, to recruit volunteers to engage in this project. We're currently working with 60 volunteers across Denmark. Um, these volunteers, some of them are very active, some of them are not very active, it's also based on seasons. I mean, we saw during the summer, we did have some nice days, warm, warm days in, in Denmark this summer. Um, the, uh, the activity fell, and now we can see that people are starting back up again now that we are heading into autumn and winter time. The way that we um, reward the local archives is that we give them credits um, as and when they need them. So we are starting to hand out credits now to the various archives. 
and that's really great to see. Next, you can see some of the participants um, that we are working with, archive participants that we're working with, and uh, I don't know how familiar you are with <laughs> Danish geography, but I can tell you that this is very much a wide variety of places uh, stemming from the very north of Denmark to the very south of Sealand and Denmark. So it's, it's really, really good. Um, and we're very happy with the archives that we're working with. This is, uh, an, this is a, a, a picture from our website, which is a counter for how much um, we've done. This is not updated. We've actually done a lot more. Um, so we actually need to update that one. But just as a, an example of uh, how we are uh, promoting how far we've come on the project. This is a status just for the Aarhus City Archives. You can see here, we have currently scanned uh, 51,000 pages. We have manually transcribed uh, eight, just over 8,000 pages. We've machine read about 29,000 pages and proof read about 12,000 pages. And that is about a quarter of all the records and pages that has been uh, supplied so far throughout the, uh, with all the different archives. Some of the problems that we are encountering is uh, problems with segmentation. Uh, and we have found that thorough segmentation before uh, machine reading is absolutely critical to, uh, to get the best results. But I'm sure all of you are very aware of that. So one of the interesting parts maybe for you is does it work? Do the models work? Uh, the models that we're using um, are a mix of uh, models created by the Norwegian National Archives and the Royal Danish uh, Arch uh, no, yeah, Libra uh, Library. Um, and I've got about three slides coming up to look at how our results um, are. The records and minutes from 1870 to 1950, that is our main focus point because that is where we have most of our material. So we trained a, rec uh, um, a, a model using uh, eight and a half thousand pages. Um, the models, uh, does the material comes from Aarhus Faxe, Nesville, Gentofte, and the Royal Library. It works very well on most non-Gothic handwritten material. We have both Gothic hand, uh, handwritten material and old style handwritten material. And uh, it definitely prefers the old style handwritten material. Um, and we have a, uh, a margin of error of five to seven percent, so we're very pleased with that. We've also got a Danish Gothic print uh, model. Uh, you can see we've uh, used about 3,000 pages of training data. Uh, it's very comparable to OCR programs or models. Um, it works on most printed text that we've got, and the margin of error is very, very, very low. We also have a collaboration with a uh, researcher at Aarhus University, um, a historian called Nina Kuffel. She received uh, a lot of money from the Carlsberg Foundation to work on um, administrative writing in the 18th century. And she, alongside uh, some student helpers, um, trained a very, very good um, 18th century model that we also use in our project. She, uh, she found that the margin of error that they um, encountered was 6 to 7 percent, and they were also very, very pleased with that. Gothic handwriting in Danish is, is incredibly difficult to read. I, I know that because I worked a lot with it when I did my PhD, and I didn't have transcribers, and I really wish I did, because it would have certainly <laughs> saved a lot of time. And then we're also testing out a generic 19th century model um, it's, like I said here, it's an experiment because we are uh, bringing in different um, types of text, uh, different types of material from 19th century mixed, uh, mixed is uh, both Gothic and old style handwriting and 18th century administrative uh, writing. The rate of error is uh, 8 to 10 percent, so it really could get better. Um, we have found that um, a more specialized model for the material that we are using is better um, 
but we would actually like to, to, to train this generic model more, so we do need a lot more training material for this to work, but we are in a process of doing that. So, crowdsourcing and training new users. Um, like I said, we have about 60 volunteers throughout Denmark. The way that we are recruiting them is actually not us as such, it's the local archives who are participating in our project. Like I said, some of them have lots of volunteers, some don't have very many. It's up to the local um, archives to recruit volunteers into the projects that they are working on. Each local archive will work on local material because the local material is, uh, the material is there locally in their archive. So they decide within the framework of uh, city and uh, council, what's it called, city town and parish council uh, records, they get to decide which material they're looking at. They also then get to uh, give this material to their volunteers to work on as well. So we are not actually fully engaged in the material that they are working on per se, but we are kind of keeping it all together like sort of a, an umbrella type thing. So the way that we're doing it is we have a brilliant uh, coordinator called Mia, who has been traveling throughout Denmark to the different local archives and setting up workshops. And she's done about eight workshops um, where local archives from that local area or local region have come in and they've been trained in using transcribers. And then they tried uh, using it themselves afterwards while Mia was still there at hand to help out. And then the idea was then that they would get in sufficient enough to then go and train their own volunteers. We also have weekly gatherings at the Aarhus City Archive. This is actually one of those ways where we are trying to give back to our local volunteers in Aarhus. Um, usually our reading room is open uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but we have exclusively opened our reading room on Mondays for our VIP um, transcribers. And uh, we always make sure that there's cake and coffee available for them. Now we saw that there weren't, weren't very many people coming in during the summer, but now with autumn coming up, more and more people are coming in and they are just having such a lovely time sitting all around these tables helping each other um, and that's just a really really nice atmosphere we are also looking at uh, doing online workshops but online workshops don't work as well in our experience as going and being there physically um, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to know exactly what pace you should set when you're doing an online workshop whereas when you are with people they can put their hand up much better and say, sorry, can you just repeat that? We are also working on making vlogs, video logs or video blogs in Danish, because one of the challenges that we have is that our volunteers are mostly seniors and their English isn't great. And as you all know, transcribers is in English. So that is quite a challenge. We have um, translated uh, the guides into Danish, but sometimes it just isn't enough. So we're looking at and working on making video um, tutorials. We're also working with the history department at uh, Aarhus University. Like I said, introducing students to transcribers uh, because some of them will be using the program in their assignments going forward. So one of the, some of the experience we have with training new users when we're talking about seniors is when they come in, they are incredibly excited. They think this is amazing. They love transcribing. They've been transcribing for years and years and years when they've been researching their own heritage and their family history. So generally speaking, they are very interested in, uh, in this type of work. They have an ability to read old style handwriting and Gothic handwriting, so they are a treasure trove uh, for us. They have the time, unless it's winter or summer and they want to be in the garden. Um, and they are generally very interested in preserving the local history of the area where they live in. And that's one of the reasons why we're very keen to give them material from the local area, because they are more um, engaged in, in, in doing that kind of work than if we gave them something from Aarhus, and they might not actually understand why should we transcribe things from Aarhus when they live in Sealand. Some of the challenges is that, um, like I said, the program is in English. They're not always very sufficient in English. 
Um, so that really does require quite a lot of uh, hand-holding. They are also not always um, particularly literate in digital uh, programs. Um, as I'm sure most of us will agree, it's not the easiest program to use, especially not when you first encounter it. It does take some, some time to get used to because the buttons are small and they can sometimes be difficult to figure out. The segmentation is arduous, as I'm sure we'll all agree. So some of our, um, most of our volunteers, they just want to transcribe because that's what they've been used to. That's what they've been doing for years. They've been transcribing in Word and Excel and that sort of thing. So they're like, why, why can't we just continue using Word? Why do we have to start with segmentation and why do we have to do proofreading and why, why do we have to all do all these things? So that's our task then to say, well, this is the future and you're part of building a future. And then they're like, oh, why? That's, that's really cool. <laughs> and actually, a funny story, on, on Monday, we had um, one of these VIP gatherings of our volunteers, and um, an older guy came in, and he'd, he'd never been part of this um, project before. Um, so he was, I think he was just, he, he just heard about it, and he thought, oh, this is interesting. So he came along, and he'd never used transcribers before. And we have this Facebook page, our user Facebook page, uh, for all of our volunteers. And he, uh, he, he wrote a post on Facebook afterwards saying, this is really exciting, I really, I can't wait to get, I can't wait to get started. I've downloaded Transcribers, and I can't wait to get, get, get started. And then yesterday I saw that he commented on his own post where it said, goodness me, it's like going from a 1960s Ferguson tractor to a 4x4 SUV. This is exciting. <laughs> So that was really cool. Uh, so our experience with training new users when we're looking at students. The positives are they're excited. These are history students. They fancy themselves as historians. Most of them probably never work with history, but we won't tell them that. Um, so so they, do, they do have an interest in, in history. They uh, see great value in uh, working with transcribers, they see great value in um, gathering a large pool of handwritten material that is then digitized, digitized and used for the future. They are digitally capable, uh, even though they still do think that the program is a bit difficult, and they are very good at English. So those challenges I eradicated. However, unlike our seniors, they have a really hard time reading the handwritten material. So like I said, even the material we gave them from 19, the 1940s was actually too hard for them to read. So what they did was they spent about 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out what all the letters said, and then they thought, screw that. We are just going to transcribe, hit the transcribe button, and their brains exploded. They were, they were mind blown, absolutely mind blown. Um, one of the things we heard from the students was that the program's interface is difficult and it does take time to learn. And in this day and age, things need to come fast. People are impatient, so uh, it's maybe something to, to look into making it even better. But I can see it's already improving so much, it's wonderful. Something that's really important is staying in touch with our volunteers. And we do that by blogging on our website. Uh, the uh, blogs consist of uh, updates about a uh, new version of Transcribers, the expert client, or when do you need to start um, downloading a new Java version, and how do you do that? That can sometimes be difficult. We also blog about interesting stories in the material, like, for example, if a family has been applying for poor relief, uh, we just sort of tell this story in an anecdotal way or we uh, talk about how we are progressing with the project, or if Mia has been to a workshop somewhere, she, uh, she writes about her experience with going on this workshop. We also have a Twitter page where we are doing uh, project promotion content. Uh, this is more like an outreach for people like yourselves. If you want to see how the project is progressing, that's where I will be, you know, creating content, and I've also been tweeting from this conference, so uh, some lovely pictures on that. We write newsletters to participating archives. That's not for the volunteers, but those are for the uh, archives, 
to try and tell them this is how it's going, this is where we are seeing ourselves in the future. We would like to maybe reach out to more archives, would you like to join, uh, and so on and so forth. We also have a strong presence on our uh, user-focused uh, Facebook group, like I just mentioned. It is a group where we are available to help, so they can write with different questions that they might have. If they, um, if they can't figure out a certain word, they take a picture of it and they upload it. And most often, some of the other volunteers will have answered this question before we can even um, see it, before we've been, even seen it. So there's a, like a real nice community feel on this Facebook page where they're all helping each other, they're encouraging each other, and they really do get a sense of togetherness that they are part of a larger vision for this particular nationwide project. So it's lovely. And also we post news about workshops and events on there. So what's next? Uh, right now I am uh, working on um, a new project, a uh, Nordic project, where we will be inviting uh, archives and maybe even the National Lib uh, Library of Norway, we're hoping, um, to be part of a large-scale digitization effort of, uh, of documents that pertain to our dem democratization efforts from the 19, no, sorry, 1800s and onwards, maybe even the 1700s, we're not quite sure yet. Um, we will be engaging uh, ourselves, the Greenlandic, Norwegian, Swedish, Icelandic and Faroese uh, archives. And uh, we're really hoping to get a lot of money from the AP Müller Mask Foundation uh, in due time. So that's a little bit from us and uh, I'm very happy to uh, take questions. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, let's go with the questions directly. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, our... Um, well, we, 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 we basically ask our, our um, volunteers to use Transcribles, the, exp, uh, the expert client. Uh, but failing that, um, the light uh, program is, is definitely also an option and we are looking into becoming better at teaching the light version because we have been m mostly focusing on the expert client version. So uh, we are planning another round of workshops in, the, in due course and we will be um, promoting the light version or the, yeah, very soon. Adding to that, that would solve your language problem because the light version can be in the Danish language as well. Oh, good. We uh, have it in the Dutch version, so I imagine that if you nudge flow, you can put in the Danish translations Brilliant. as well. And they can do a, a pre-translation for you, so you only have to correct. Very good. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, I guess that's on already on my list. <laughs> it's like I, I heard your talk, so... Let's see how fast we are. <laughs> the voice from the off. If anybody was wondering, it was Florian who's taking care of these things. Good. Any more questions? Here we go. Fourth row. Sarah, will you just... <laughs> Thank you. So I have just a, a question about um, a generic model you mentioned earlier in your presentation. The what, sorry? A generic model that you were building. So how big of data are you using uh, on, like, to, to do that? Or how big uh, you, are you planning to use? Because I think the, the picture was a little bit blurry from here. Yes. Um, so, you, so you're asking what is our material? or? Right. Um, well, I am not an expert on the actual uh, program itself. Uh, that's, uh, that's somebody else. Um, but the mixed material, um, oh, is there a pointer? Is that... I think it's not working at the moment, ah, but yeah, okay. there would be. <laughs> okay. Um, as you can, might be able to uh, make out, um, at the very top it said, Gothic handwriting from the 1800s, which contains material from the 18th century administrative writing model um, that Nina Kufel from the University of Aarhus has um, trained. 
and we are also mixing it with material from um, parish councils called Elsted, Todbjerg, Malby, Bittermaling, and Brabrand, Oslo. Uh, so they are different uh, pro uh, like records, like books that we then scanned and uh, transcribed, and we just sort of put the, the, the models together, like run the models together. Did that answer your question? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Does not seem to be the case. Also online, no questions, Florian? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I think then we end here. And uh, I think another thing that we learned from your presentation is that you never should underestimate the power of coffee and cake. Absolutely. So here you go. Thank you. Thank you.